Hello and welcome back to Span TV. and of course today I want to talk about buffalo. As you've seen from the title of the video, it'd be a bit weird if we didn't. Now, today I want to look at what goes on on a software level on the Terra Station uh, 5810DN. It's their 8 by 10 GBE enabled NAS. Now we did an unboxing in a previous video and like I said I wanted to take you a little walk through the software that comes available with this device. Now if you want to learn more about this device do check out my other video based around this and of course that Buffalo switch. Today we're running through the 10 GB switch from Buffalo otherwise known as the BSMP2008. Um, so we're using that switch and we've connected that 10 GB switch into this 10 GB NAS and what we're going to do is have a quick um, walk around and check out what you get with a Buffalo NAS because as mentioned Buffalo NAS is really supportive of first person proprietary connections and security so you won't be seeing a great deal of third party support from the likes of Plex or some of those surveillance applications. Buffalo likes to think of itself as a dependable, rugged, first person, uh, sorry, first party supportive um, NAS platform. So if you're looking for something for business and you don't want all the frills and the silly apps, this is definitely something for you to consider. So the first thing you need to do is head over to Buffalo and on their page here, find um, the unit you're looking at. In this case, it's the in the 510 series, the 58100. There is a two bay and a four bay of this. Whiz on down, and there's all these different apps. Uh, one thing I do want to touch on, actually, is the boot authentication tool for Terra Station. And this is a lovely little app where you can synchronize access of a NAS or a device um, together um, with this software. So, consequently, you can set it up that the NAS can't be accessed unless a certain machine that has this tool is uh, installed, and vice versa. So that's something to check out for a later date and definitely something for you business users to look into that want an extra layer of boot security. But what you want to download is the NAS navigation tool and it's available for both Windows and Mac. Once you've got it installed, scan your network and you'll find your device here. So from here, you can do all kinds of stuff. You can map a shared folder, you can map a network drive, you can change and alter the drive letters as well can view more information about the device, you can browse the devices on, on a network drive level, so you're using your own proprietary um, file manager such as Windows Explorer if you're a, a Windows user. I'm here, you can get the device to make a little beep just to let you know where it is, <coughs> or wake up the device, and of course refresh it. With more information here, with regards to where your device lives on the network, <coughs> the firmware, and of course the amount of storage readily available, and the RAID level. So what we have with this device is it's a four bay it's got uh, sorry it's an eight bay device we've got four four tb drives and a raid six and i know you're thinking a raid 10 or a raid zero would be quicker but we're sticking with a raid six to show dual disk redundancy so once we double click that will go into the user interface now i've obviously already logged in for this but there is a login there and if you like we can log out of it and i'll show you what happens when we try to log in and here we go we if we go to easy admin we can get access to a bunch of default options rather than that interface that we were looking at just there. And with these, we can change things on the back end and this is more for your IT guy to deal with. But what we want is full access to the, NAS, to the NAS. So if we go for that nice web access there, I've already put the password in for me there. And we can time limit the access as well. What this does is give us uh, the nice flashy access point, so we'll put Robbie in there. Do you know what I might have already put Robbie? So we'll put Robbie A. Oh, no spaces. Tut, tut, tut. Give ourselves full access to everything. And this is if you want to set up a brand new user via the web panel rear access. And you can time limit their access, give them permanent access or temporary access too. So what we're going to do is we're going to let that set up and give us our web access and then we're going to have a look at the sort of things that this NAS can do. Because once again it can't provide some of those flash third party apps that you've seen but it can migrate with third party cloud providers as well as give you what I think is um, um, you know, an uh, almost unchallenged level of access to your NAS at any given time. So we'll make our way into the device. And here we have the direct access. And now a lot of the options I've already set up, but this is the main user interface that you'll be accessing it via the web or your network, because you can obviously access this anywhere in the world if you've got the right security precautions set up. But once again, for those that are familiar with Synology, QNAP and Acer Store and all those brands, 
you probably are used to a much more flashy interface, a much more desktop uh, familiar environment. But if you're looking for stone cold details and full control, this is the device for you. And if you have even a pinch of IT knowledge, this will do the job. So first thing first, file sharing. <coughs> you can create new folder structures if you like, new shared folders, new individual folders, and you can give every individual folder its own dedicated means of permissions and access. You can create new user groups, new individual users, and with these users, you can create an in, you can import an entire existing CSV that you might already have of your users, import it over to the device, and then give those individual users their own permissions and access. Not just general access, but individual files and folders too. And creating fold, uh, creating users is so easy. Creating users straight away will go for Rob user ID, we'll give him a number, why not? Email, we bring an email in there, we'll give him a password. I'm gonna go for the imaginative password, password. You can give the person a name, that dude. And once again, you can give them a storage limit um, access, so if we give them one gigabyte of storage, we'll give them admin access, but of course we can set up and create different layers of protection if we want. And we can create a user group for them so you can come up with, say, management, users, staff, clients, customers, that sort of thing, and go from there. Oh, apparently, I believe our password needs more. Oh, no. Is our name not long enough? Let's find out. Robbie 2. Oh, we have to in... Oh, it's there we go. The more astute and observant might have noticed that. And what's happening now is we're now creating our new user and the amount of access that they have. So again, for people that are worried about user account control and giving users access or having to remove these users as quickly as possible, you know, if you lose a member of staff or it's a temporary setup for a client, this is something we can do. So we've created this dude, we've created a username and a password for them, and we can change the amount of access and folder access. We've only got the two folders at the moment. And of course, if you want to remove them at some point, it really is that straightforward. And boom, they're gone. You have to make sure it's not an automate, automated system. And Robbie 2 is gone. I'm gonna wait for that to delete. It's now going to eradicate Robbie 2, because let's face it, there can only be one. And it's as straightforward as that. And these user groups all have web access and local network access too, with their own password, and you can monitor everything they've done. So that's just gonna let us know that after they're deleted, we can log out. And from there, that's how easy it is to create users, and the same goes for groups. Now here is where we can talk about the, uh, the kind of file access, because you've got standard protocols of files and folders, as well as obviously an rsync there. If we want to synchronize this Buffalo NAS with another Buffalo NAS, or another QNAP or Synology NAS and create that real-time synchronization between NASs over a network or indeed the internet if your connection is strong enough. If we go over to storage, we can look at all these lovely options here. We can enable an iSCSI uh, remote access, uh, so you know, uh, a network or internet-based drive that has the appearance of localization for your home system. We can check our RAID, which is fantastic too. And you've got logical volume management and that kind of stuff. You've got USB drive support. So obviously if you connect a USB drive to the front of the device, this is where we'll find it. Do I have a USB stick on me to test this? Let's have a look. Let's bung that air in the front. I'm gonna connect that USB drive and see what happens here. And here we go. We can attach a USB drive, we can format the drive, we can view the drive, we can mount the drive. We've got all of the stuff that we need to do. And once again, with those, with adding drives or any kind of storage, the beautiful thing is that this you can make a standard USB drive network accessible. I know that's something you can do on all NASs technically, but it's the idea with this that you can restrict it or enable it as you see fit per user. Now, if we check out the RAID, we can have, I'll get rid of that USB, we can look at the RAID array, that RAID 6 that we've got inside the device. We can create multiple RAID arrays if we see fit, so you can bung, you know, eight drives inside this device and come up with four RAID 1s if we so choose and then monitor each array as we see fit. Moreover, we can alter the array or delete the array as we see appropriate or add drives 
if we add new drives to the device. Another lovely little feature there that most NAS devices have, but not this level of ease and access. If we move away from this, we've got web services which let us synchronize and migrate um, with cloud platforms such again, Google Drive and Dropbox. And what that means is we can then connect this NAS to that cloud storage to either back up to or from it as we see fit. And again, we would have liked to have seen a few more um, providers on this list, but unfortunately these are the only two at this time. Now applications, again, doesn't support a lot of third party applications and which Buffalo NAS you go for will change the applications that you can see. If you go for some of the Link Station series, you have a few more um, media, you know, kind of photo, music, video kind of applications as well as backup applications too. This device deals with a far more enterprise level um, system and it arrives with 10 licenses for Nova backup for backing up your uh, devices, your Windows and Macs and that sort of thing to this Buffalo NAS securely and safely. Now via the network, this is where we can change our IP settings, we can assign different numbers, make it dynamic and more. Port trunking of course, if we've got multiple LAN ports, this device has two LAN ports and that 10 GB port. So enabling port trunking is really, really easy. And there we go, we can bond them together. Probably shouldn't have done that while I'm in the middle of the interface for this video, but let's find out. But now I've just enabled port bonding, uh, so port trunking with those ports on the rear. And if you've got uh, multiple LAN cables going into a switch like I've got, that will vastly improve the upload and download to the device. You let that change the IP settings now. I'll be honest, if this goes on much longer, I might have to just cut forward in this video because this is taking its sweet, sweet time, isn't it? After port trunking, we've got other options here about service restrictions. You can check the uh, ping of your device. I basically see um, how healthy your network is and where, where it lives within it. And there's all kinds of options here that I think a lot of the IT nerds out there will definitely appreciate. Now with regards to backup, obviously we've got Apple Time Machine backup synchronization. So you can get the device enabled to have multiple Apple Time Machine backups. Everything from backing up to another device to replication of folders and files internally and externally are all supported by the device. And finally, we've got the management section. Now, <clears throat> with this device, this is where we change the general settings. So if you're connecting the device to a UPS, obviously that's something you can set up as well, as well as email notifications to let you know when changes happen on your device that you want to be alerted to. Obviously, sleep and timer and more is obviously for the likes of having a screensaver equivalent or the device going down to low power mode as needed. And configuration management lets you change things about the device that you want to, such as, once again, if you add USB information and more. Carrying on down to the bottom, there's obviously an update. I believe there is another software update that was released this morning. Um, quite frequent um, updates for this device, which are quite nice. And boot authentication is definitely something that is some people might want to look into here because some of these are ones that have uh, settings whereby the device, and I've talked about it in a previous video, where you can set up the boot authentication tool, which is that one that we talked about before at the top of the video, with regards to setting up a uh, Windows or Mac machine, which unless that machine is on, you cannot access the NAS, this is another layer of security. But you've also got um, the settings whereby you can set the device up where if an error happens three times with the password, then you cannot get into this device and it will self encrypt. Now that is enabled by, uh, it's disabled by default, but it's definitely a setting that you can play with if you do want that extra layer of security on your device. Um, and of course there is more about uh, where you want the notification sent and if you want alert sounds and more, but the device itself is designed to be more of a file server. And therefore this interface isn't something you're going to be dealing with on a daily basis, but nevertheless, for the price level that this device arrives at and moreover, the fact that from a business stance, what you want is something you set up and can forget. This is definitely something that you should be considering. And if you are looking for the most cost effective 10 GBE, and I'm talking 10 G base T or RJ45 based um, NAS storage, right now the Buffalo Terra Station is the go-to device. I know it doesn't have some of the bells and whistles of Synology or QNAP, but that's because it doesn't want to. It's not that it can't, it's that it doesn't want to. If you want that, look at the link station. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching, and I look forward to doing the same overview for that great 10GBE switch soon. Speak to you soon.